And my text is taken from the 21st chapter of Revelation. I'm going to read the first five verses. And I saw a new heaven. I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there is no more sea. Amen. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Amen. And he said unto me, Write, write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. <clears throat> write these words so that people will know that now when he is not with us face to face, is not the end of the matter. Tell him I'm going to make everything new. Yeah. Write it down. Those who want to be my people and me be their God in a more direct, immediate, mm -hmm. and a fuller extent. Tell him. Write. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make everything new. Tell, yeah. tell those that have sorrow. Tell them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make everything new. Tell, tell those that are, are dying. Tell them. I'm going to make everything new. Tell those that are crying. Tell them I'm going to make everything new. Tell the people with pain I'm going to make everything new. Tell them those are all part of the passing order. Yes, amen. I'm going to make everything new. These things are not the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. Now when God says I'm going to make everything new, this is not novelty like a change of venue, as they say. Mm -hmm. Just we'll do things a little bit differently this time and try again. It's not going to be that sort of thing. Make everything new means it's going to, it's going to be a start over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not with the same material either. Right. Yeah. New material. Now, this is necessitated. This has to be <coughs> because of the entrance of sin and corruption. Both man and the environment in which man lives has been tainted, have been tainted, uh -huh. and they're going down. Yes. They cannot yes. be recovered as they are. Yes. Amen. God's got to start with something <coughs> new. But he's going to let this run its course first. Mm -hmm. He didn't start new in Eden. That's not where he started. Mm -hmm. There's more at stake here than just extricating men. Mm -hmm. There's a demonstration of God's wisdom. There's a vindication of God. There's a supporting of the postulate that God can't lie. There's a truth of God's promise has got to be established. There's a truth of God's intolerance with sin that has to be established. There's a truth that God can in fact start something new with nothing uh -huh. that has to be established. So I'm not, I've not done it yet, God said, but I'm going to do it. So if everything looks like it's not ideal, it says it's not over yet. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to make everything new. There's an expectation in all creation, including the inanimate creation or impersonal creation, and, and redeemed man. There's a sense of this. Yes, amen. Romans the 8th chapter states this very beautifully. Romans 8, 20 through 25. For the creature, or the creation, was made subject to vanity, not willingly, mm -hmm. but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which had the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that's seen is not hope, but... For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? 
But if we hope for that, we see not, then do with patience. We with patience. Wait for patience. We just need a word to write it down then. Write it down for the patient ones. I make all things new. <laughs> write it. You know the name, the whole creation has been pregnant for 6,000 years. Right. And it's not a stool of the stillbirth. It's been groaning and travailing labor pains. Discontent. So if you feel discontent, well now you know why. Yeah. You're part of a, there's a part of you that's part of an order that's going down. And uh, God says, I'm going to make everything new. All discontentment can ultimately be traced to mortality. Yeah. Amen. Ultimately, to mortality. In fact, that death has been imposed. See if you wonder, can God do something against the will of man? Can God make people do things? Well, what about death? What yeah. about that? We're pray tell does man's will enter into that. He imposed death on man and on the whole creation. But it was an expectation. He's going to make everything new. Everything been blighted. I want to look at this uh, matter of new, what is involved here, because this is a large word. I make everything new, not new like new car, not that not new like new suit, not not like that. <laughs> Not even new like new baby, not like right, that. Right. It's a different kind of newness. Mm -hmm. There's two ideas in newness. I want to touch briefly on them. One is the idea of fresh. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if it's a child, it's newborn. Mm -hmm. so it's fresh. If it's a fruit of the earth, it's a new fruit. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Leviticus 23.16, concerning some of the offerings, they're called meat offerings. Meat in this case doesn't mean meat as in flesh. Mm -hmm. It's meat as in food. It was actually grain. It was spelled out. Mm -hmm. When you brought grain to God for an offering, you couldn't go to the store storehouse. Mm -hmm. You didn't take your grain out of a bin mm -hmm. where you stored it. Not when you bring it to God. Mm -hmm. It has to be fresh. Here's what he said. Even on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Some fresh mm -hmm. produce just, just gathered. You may remember when Samson fought a thousand Philistines. Said he found a new jawbone of an ass. Uh -huh. See, not one had been laying out there and the sun bleached and baked and decaying. <laughs> not that, a new, new jawbone of an ass. Put forth his hand and slew a thousand therewith. Another occasion, Elijah come across some poisoned water and he told him, Well, bring me a new cruise. Mm -hmm. We'd see a, a jar. Bring me a new jar. Not, nothing had been in it before. Mm -hmm. And put some uh, salt in it. And they brought it, remember, th this new jar. Nothing had been in it before. And he Threw this new jar with this salt and it cured the waters. I'm trying to hear that fresh, the idea of fresh. Mm -hmm. Second Kings 2.20 is where he did that. Mm -hmm. When Israel made their contributions to the Lord in various offerings, see, God told them that produce, everything they grew in the field, the grain, all the animals, they, the first of it was the God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, I can't afford it. Hey, hey. You don't say to God, I can't afford it. That's right, amen. <laughs> what do you mean you can't afford it? You do not say this to God. He said, I had to bring the first, the new. Mm -hmm. Here's how I put it, Nehemiah 10, 39, where Nehemiah restored this, because Israel got sloppy and sloven about giving to God. Mm -hmm. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn of the new wine. In fact, the prophet said the wine was in the cluster, so it was like fresh juice. Don't bring any butter. Don't bring any bottled wine to me, is what God was saying. Yeah, right. I want it while it's alive. Mm -hmm. Not with fermentation alive, live with growth alive. Mm -hmm. Bring that, bring that to me. Notice, so the idea of freshness is there. David talked about this idea in singing. A new song. Psalm 149, singing to the Lord, a new song, fresh. <laughs> well, it's time to get... Stay on this out of religion. It really is time to get it out. 
stay on south, get freshness in. Fresh doesn't mean hype. Doesn't mean you pump it up. You do a football, pump it up till it's full of hot air. That isn't what it means. I don't mean to demean anybody here, but I think a lot of praise leaders are like puff, pumping hot air into people. It be something fresh mm -hmm. to God. And uh, God even does it. His mercies are new every morning and Amen. fresh. So if it seems like the mercy's running out for today, wait till the morning. Amen. Yes. Wait till the morning. Yes. It'll be fresh. Yes. Thank God every day wasn't uh, 100 hours long. Think about that. Hey, God could have made a day 100 hours long. Did he made it long enough so he could sleep a third and, and have a, look forward to a new beginning? Every 24 hours, what a blessing that is. New mercies every morning. Now, that's freshness. But a, a particular, in our text, he's talking about things of a new order. Mm -hmm. right. A new kind. Mm -hmm. Different order. Now, let me illustrate how often this is mentioned in Scripture. A different kind. It's not like what's here now. Exodus 1, verse 8. You remember that uh, Joseph had gone out into Egypt? To make a long story short, he called down Jacob and the others. There were 70. Counting Joseph and his sons, there, there were 70 people come down. And things went real well for them. <laughs> Pharaoh gave them a special land. And they were held in high regard. Joseph was a co-regent of Egypt. He was, the, he was to Pharaoh what Jesus is to God. Mm -hmm. Right-hand man. But Exodus 1.8, as the time of the deliverance drew nigh, mm -hmm. said there, there rose up a new king. A new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. He's a different kind of king. Mm -hmm. He wasn't amiable towards Joseph. I'm showing here that new means unlike, mm -hmm. different, of a new order. New, let us, in, in, this, in our case, we're talking about a new superior order. In this case here, it was, a, it was of an inferior order. But we're talking about a new superior superior order. <clears throat> this also, while song, our songs to God are fresh, there's a sense in which they're new of a new kind, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe, can you remember when singing took on a new, new experience, too, mm -hmm. when the songs were new, mm -hmm. of a new kind, they were different? Think how often this is said, sing unto the Lord a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. Well, that definitely would be new in some places, I understand. Psalm 40, verse 3 says, He has put a new song in my mouth. Different kind of song. What kind is it? Even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear. How about that? Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. <laughs> Why? Well, because of what he was singing was revelation of a thing. Yes. It was like prophecy and song. It was like when Paul said a stranger come into the church at Corinth and heard him all prophesy, and he'd fall on his face. See, they, they revealed the thoughts of his heart, and he fell on his face, and God's in you of a truth. That's, that's what this new song can do. Mm -hmm. You get him in, some, um, uh, in the presence of a bunch of people. Excuse me, that vulgar expression. In the presence of a lot of people, and they're singing praise to God in this anticipating heaven. I, it does sound different. Yes. You have to admit some of this, <laughs> some of this moany type music that is today, kind of like people have a stomach ache or something. It's really, <laughs> you see someone rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. Yes. I'm going to tell you right now, this isn't in the modern church music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The note of expectation isn't there. It's the begging tone is in it. Yeah. The begging tone is in it. You just have to listen to it to see. New song is when there's a song, ex song of expectation. Mm -hmm. Psalm 96 1 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Yeah. So, just in case there's not one thing, they're excluded from it. And Psalm 144 9, I will, I will sing a new song unto thee, mm -hmm. O God. Upon the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praise to thee. So, I got up and found an outlet yeah. to express myself, this new <laughs> insight that I have. And Revelation 14.3 says they sung a new song before the throne. <laughs> be a different kind of song there. We're just like learning the first verse, you know. Maybe we're just learning the chorus. Right? But when we get before the throne, it's going to be new because we'll have new insights. Yes. 
new song. There's a, God spoke to the prophets about doing a new thing, new kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Something had been done before. Here's one, Isaiah 43, 19. I'm showing here that new means different order, different kind. So you can't get used to this world. You can't get used to the things of this world. You can't try and adapt your religion to the world. Because there's a new thing coming that's going to be unlike this, see? So here's what he said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth and shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Well, that is new. That is new. A way in that's a highway. Most people don't build a highway through the desert because you have to maintain it too, you see. But God's highways don't have to be maintained. And a river's in the desert, that's not normal. It's a new kind of thing. Normally the rivers are around the plush vegetation and yeah. nice places, but here I'm going to do a new thing, new kind of thing. Here's something he said, said it again to Jeremiah, through Jeremiah. He was going to do some new thing. How long wilt thou go about, O thy backsliding daughter? Whew, what a way. You don't want to get God to ever have to talk to you like that. How long wilt thou go about, O thy backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Lord, well, as you might suppose, there's been a lot of discussion about this verse, but I'll just cut to the chase and tell you what it means. Most of the time, the woman was protected by the man. Yeah. But there was a man mm -hmm. who came into the world that was protected by a woman. Yes. <laughs> and it was the Lord Jesus. He was compassed by a woman. Yes. That holy thing mm -hmm. was compassed in yeah. the womb of a woman. It's a, new, it's a new thing. Mm -hmm. It's a new thing. That was done. Now here's something else God talked about. I'm calling people by a new name, different kind of name. Isaiah 62, 2. The Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Now we have examples of this, of God naming the name. He told Zechariah, call the son John. The Lord gave the name. And the angel of the Lord told Joseph, thou shalt call his name Jesus. So he said, gave him, gave him the name. Yes. Now, all God's people are going to be called by a new name, a name that will match their identity. Amen. Now, some, uh, some of us, I was fortunate, by God's grace, to be born to parents who named me according to their spiritual perception. So they named me Given, which is the Anglo-Saxon form of Nathan, which means gift of God. Mm -hmm. I was the firstborn son. And so they named me in accordance with their perception, and they gave me to Christ. Mm -hmm. And it it, uh, it was effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, God's going to name us, see, yeah. according to how He's recreated us. Yeah. <laughs> what a pleasant thought. Amen. Huh? Have you ever, have, have you, any of you ever experienced sorrow about you sense in your spirit what you have from God, but you sense that some, some people you're around, they can't see this, and they only think of you after the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, this new name, that's, <laughs> that's going to take care of all of that. Mm -hmm. yes. And again, God says in Revelation 2.17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. How about the churches never hear the book of Revelation? I thought about that. This, is, this statement is made eight times in the book of the Revelation. Let, let hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What, what about the churches that never hear from this book? Interesting. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden man, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth save he that receiveth it. See that uh, your relationship with God is going to be so close, there's going to be things about you and God that only you know. Amen. God's going to know it all, but everybody else isn't going to know it all. It's going to be that personal. That personal. I remember uh, it's a, just a small picture of this. I was on a, on a trip for a religious institution. 
and I went to another religious institution for the ordination of a president. And when I got there, there was like a, a, a jockeying for recognition by all the people that kind of went with me. They wanted to be recognized and put themselves forward as official representatives. And I was kind of, all of a sudden, was kind of like a nobody. And, uh, but I knew a lot of these people. And it bothered me in my, not angered, but I was disappointed. I just kind of like nudged out to the side. And all of a sudden, the president of this organization called out over the crowd, Brother Given, I certainly have enjoyed your writings over the last 40 years. <laughs> I had an association with him mm -hmm. that the people that were jockeying for a position didn't have. Mm -hmm. Now in the glory, yes. it's going to be the same way. Yes. It's going to be very personal, very yes. personal. Yes. And you're going to write, only you will know how personal it is. Yes. Oh, amen. Only you will know what God did to get you there. Mm -hmm. And how zealous he was for your salvation. There's going to be things you'll have to testify about it for the rest yes. of us to know it. You'll have mm -hmm. to testify. We will. I have no question about it. New name. See, a new name. Different kind of, mm -hmm. different kind of name. And who can forget we have a promise by Isaiah and a promise in the book of the Revelation about a new heavens and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Here's Revelation, uh, Isaiah 65, 17. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Oh, that is going to be a great deliverance. Have you thought uh, how many times they have come into your mind in just the last day? <laughs> That's a new. See, what, 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 what's it mean here? Well, the new is going to be so impressive and so pregnant with good things that who cares about what was before? Huh? Just going to take it away. New, new kind of heavens, new kind of earth. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21 1, that's where John said, I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there, yeah. there was no more sea, which is seven eighths of the earth's surface. Mm -hmm. Seven eighths of the earth's present earth is water. Mm -hmm. You can't live in it, and you, you have to try and avoid it. Tsunami waves are on it. <laughs> It's kind of fearful. It's very deep and unknown. It contains all kinds of things nobody really knows about. No more sea. In other words, in this world, ignorance is the most predominant part of our life in the flesh. There's infinitely more that we don't know than that we do know. But that's going to be reversed. <laughs> no more sea. It's going to be more, we're going to know more than what we don't know. New heavens and new earth. New kind. They're not going to have a curse upon them. They're not going to, they're not going to be unlawful desires associated with it. Here we have the lusts of the, connected with the world. It's not going to be that way anymore. Worldly lusts that war against the soul. See, won't be. And there's uh, new, new things. Different kind of things. Remember, God's not making everything new. Making everything new. So already he's going to make your name new. Uh-huh. We know about that. He's going to make your song new. Mm -hmm. We know about that. He's going, make a, he's going to make a way. And he's going to make a new name for you. And he's going to, a new spirit. Mm -hmm. New spirit. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. Amen. There it is. Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. See, it's mm -hmm. new. We're talking about I make everything new. It's starting now. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. starting now. We're getting into he's, everything he's going to make new isn't going to wait until that grand day. Mm -hmm. It's starting now. A new spirit. Mm -hmm. What is a new spirit? Well, that's, that's the real you. Mm -hmm. That's deep down the thing that moves you. Job said, there is a spirit in man. And the Spirit of the Almighty gives him understanding. Yeah. So that part's going to be mm -hmm. going to be new. Apart from God's intervention, that part of man is ignorant and dark, unknown. A new spirit. One that's not characterized by a bent towards sin. Mm -hmm. See, John said, whatever is born of God doesn't sin. Amen. 
cannot sin. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, 1 John 3, 9. Right. And again, this 1 John 5, 18 says, the, the wicked one touches him not. See, what's born of God now? We're not talking about this. This is born of Adam. This, mm -hmm. this came from flesh. Mm -hmm. The first body came from God. We understand that. But these, the part that's the spirit that came from God that you have in Christ Jesus, it really can't sin. Mm -hmm. But see, that's not all you got, though, as you understand. Yes. So he's been your down down payment here. So you if you if you listen to this inner man, if you put on the new man, you pay attention to him, mm -hmm. you'll be ready to make the transition to the new order, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The new world order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the true one. <laughs> a new spirit. Now, I thank God it's not characterized by bent towards sin. There'll be a new heart. Mm -hmm. This is like the area of sensitivity of the new man. The spirit is the identity mm -hmm. and the heart, that's the, the thing that makes them tick. The, the, it's to your spirit what your heart is to your body. It's the thing that makes it move and have its being. So Ezekiel 36, 26 says, A new heart also will I give you. So this uh, this is a pledge of the new order. See, he's, a, he's readying us for the new order. Amen. Whoever's not ready will not participate in it. Now, we need to really be right up front about this, that if you don't have a new heart, a new spirit, mm -hmm. in this world, you are not going to be part of this new heavens and new earth. That's right. And the other place is uh, Lake the Birds of Fire and Brimstone. That's, that's the, other, mm -hmm. the other place. This new heart, this isn't a wicked heart. See, without Christ, without this, new heart mm -hmm. the scripture says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and yeah. yeah, that's apart from Christ mm -hmm. and it is, yes, it is. so sometimes uh, we parents <laughs> we parents say well how could they? why did my children do that well there's a stone in there yeah. that's why they did that mm -hmm. It's why you did it too. Mm -hmm. There's a stone in there. The heart of man apart from Christ is desperately wicked. Yeah. Who can know it? But see the new heart he gives you, it's not like this. Amen. That's why it's out of order to talk to God's people like they don't have a new heart. That's right. Uh -huh. This is out of order. Romans 10.10 10 tells you that with the heart man believes under righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's a heart that's prone to believe. This new heart is prone to believe. It's inclined in this, in this direction. Yeah. Can I tell you, mind you, you've got an old man too. It's not inclined in this direction. There's a warfare going on between these two natures. The new nature, that's a different kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the old, which is of the old order, it's going down and it's fighting against the one that's coming up. And this heart is this new heart. It's been purified by faith. Mm -hmm. Acts fifteen nine says, "Purified their hearts by faith." So this uh, this new heart lives in an acute persuasion of God and Christ and mm -hmm. the things to come. That's that's the only kind of heart God creates. Mm -hmm. There isn't any other kind of heart that He gives. So where there's people that don't have this fundamental bent toward God, they don't have a new heart. That's all. But they they can. God mm -hmm. will give a new heart. And this new heart is the heart Christ dwells in. Mm -hmm. Christ dwells in our heart by faith, Ephesians 3.17. He doesn't dwell in the heart that's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't dwell in that heart. He dwells in the new heart. And of course, if a person's in Christ Jesus, and here's a marvelous thing to see, he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. He's a different kind of person. Yes. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, he's a new creature or creation. Behold, old things have passed away, all things have become new. Mm -hmm. He's a new, new kind of person. Mm -hmm. And you can't explain this to the flesh. You, <laughs> you should testify to it just to make a meal at ease and maybe there'll be someone who will kind of it's good when you're being stoned to say, I see Jesus standing. I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And some years later, there was a young man that remembered. Yes. <laughs> he said, and he wrote, he says, I was there. 
I was there consenting unto his death. It's good to speak about these things, but no. Know that uh, the world doesn't understand new creatures. That's right. In Galatians 6.15, he says, In Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. That's the thing that counts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you want to bring that up to date in our language. Back then, it, it, being a Jew is nothing. That's circumcision. Yeah. Yeah. Being a Gentile is nothing. See, that's uncircumcision. Uh -huh. In our day, we would say, well, we would say being a Baptist is nothing. That's right. Being a Christian church is nothing. Mm -hmm. Catholic is nothing. Mm -hmm. Really want to get way down there, being Muslim is nothing. Mm -hmm. Buddhist is nothing. See, who you're identified with on earth isn't even the point. Amen. Yes. Right. See, the whole earth's in the same category. Mm -hmm. So you're identified in heaven. That's the point. New creation mm -hmm. has that heavenly identity. And our aim now is to feed that new creation. That new creation has to be fed and nourished. Sometimes <laughs> holidays like 4th of July and things like this, have you noticed how much the flesh is fed? Mm -hmm. Father's Day, Mother's Day, Children's Day, and I don't mean to get on a hobby horse here, but this new creation can't live on stuff like that. That's right. You've got to feed it things from the homeland. <laughs> He's going to participate in a new creation, new kind of man, new, different kind. And God did something as far as the aggregate people is concerned. He did a new thing. And uh, before Christ, there was the Jew. It was they were the people who God focused his attention on. Mm -hmm. Smallest of all nations. But now God has a new, new man. And the man here standing for the aggregate people. In Ephesians 2.15 he pictures Jew and Gentile, there was a wall up between them that God built. Mm -hmm. God built this wall between them. Yeah. And then God took it down. Mm -hmm. It's the only wall that ever existed, the only legitimate wall that ever existed between people. Mm -hmm. God put it there, and God took it down. Amen. And here's what he said. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that was this wall, for to make in himself of twain, that's two, the twain of Jew, Gentile, uh -huh. one new man. Uh -huh. So making peace, that's this peace down, down here. So we got peace this way, peace this way. Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed how the marvelous to do this is? That when you meet someone who is reconciled to God, it, and you kind of join together. You don't say, yeah. what? What group are you with? You, you, this isn't the question you ask. You, you, you're thinking on a higher plane. Mm -hmm. Because a middle wall has been knocked down and then made peace. One new man. So far as God's concerned, there's one body of people. Christ does only have one body. There is one body. That's what the scripture yeah. says. There is one body, and it's this new man here in Ephesians 2.15. Well, now on a personal level, is a new man, too. It's a new identity. Remember, he said, I make all things new. And I'm showing here, he starts, he's starting now. Mm -hmm. He's orienting people for what's to come. Yes. He's getting you ready for this world going down and the new one coming. Yeah. Huh? He's getting you ready for the demise of everything is cursed and for the bringing in of everything is blessed. Amen. So here's what Ephesians 4.24 says. You put on the new man. What kind of man is that? Which is created in... Righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something Adam didn't have. Mm -hmm. now, he wasn't created in that. Yeah. As far as we know, the first, the first confrontation they had, Adam and Eve had, they fell. Yeah. Yeah. You ever stop to think how many of you've survived since you've been in Christ? Have you ever stopped to think how many of you've survived since you've been in Christ? How many times you've resisted? There's no account of anybody apart from Christ that ever was successful in resisting a f confrontation of Satan in his own territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever, whether it was Adam or whether it was David or whether it was Moses, it didn't make a difference who it was. If you confronted a head-on, a head-on mm -hmm. with the devil in his territory, he brought you down. Said, what about Joseph? Well, Joseph was spared that head-on confrontation. Yeah. But some, some weren't. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you. And Colossians 3.10 says, You put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge yes. after the image of him that created him. In 
created him. So we uh, we know a different we have a different frame of reference in our knowledge. Mm -hmm. This new man does. Put him on. Amen. The new man. Again, uh, I do want I want to remind you that there's the enormous amount of religion that is tailored for the old man. Mm -hmm. Like statistics, for instance, are totally unimpressive to the new man. Yeah. <laughs> they don't mean anything. Do you think statistics mean anything to Noah? Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? You're supposed to say, you got the smallest church in town, Noah! Well, well, why? What difference did that make? Mm -hmm. huh? But it, this makes a lot of difference to the to the old man. A lot of difference. Now there's something else that Paul talked about uh, to an assembly that sin had crept into the assembly. Mm -hmm. And as always, it came through teachers. That mm -hmm. Somebody turned them off to a tributary, mm -hmm. off the mainstream, and they had sin in the camp. Mm -hmm. Sin in the camp. I just fortunate that on the church page on Friday, the, I think it's Friday or Saturday, they have the church page. Isn't it a blessing that God didn't have them write down all the sinners in each of those? Yeah, they, Paul did, and Jesus did. And his assessment of the church, he'd call them out. He'd say who, who they were. If they didn't by name is what they did, he'd call them out. John would call them out. Diographies, call them out. See, Paul would call them out. Danies and Jambres, he'd call them out by name. It's a good thing that doesn't happen now. Well, I'm not sure it's a good thing, but anyway, what I'm saying is that here's God tells you what you've got to do if you got that kind of influence. Here's the first Corinthians 5 7. Purge out the old leaven. Why? That ye may be a new lump. Lump there refers to like dough. See, like a lump of bread dough. Mm -hmm. And leaven could corrupt the whole whole thing. In other words, let's have a new let's have a new fresh assembly that is suitable for God to dwell in. Yes. That angels enjoy mm -hmm. going to. New throwing here different kinds. See, I make all things new. And there Jesus has made a, a different kind of a path that led to glory. It's a different kind. Under the law, was a, it was a system of regimentation, procedures. Mm -hmm. Hebrews call it carnal ordinances. Mm -hmm. Things you uh, did outwardly. Well, our Lord Jesus made a new way, a new way into the glory. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said it would be a highway of holiness. Mm -hmm. Nothing unclean would journey on it. No lion mm -hmm. would be there. No ravenous beast would be there. Yes. So if you're like in your assembly, you got a bunch of lions and ravenous beasts, you say, I'm on the wrong road. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm on the wrong road. Mm -hmm. Here's how I stated in Hebrews. Now he takes up this thought of a highway of holiness. Isaiah 35, 8 talked about. It. Hebrews 10, 20 says that God, Christ has sanctified a new and living way. Yes, amen. See, now when Israel went to Canaan, they went through a desert. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Filled with serpents and scorpions, fiery serpents and scorpions, where with no water and there was drought. This is a new one. This is a living way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we're not going through a desert. I don't understand the world's a desert, but we're going in a world that's within that world. Mm -hmm. That's plush with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. See, we're going to the new way that's a living way. Yeah. Instead of ravenous beasts, there's things being given to us mm -hmm. along the way. It's a new kind of way. I only regret that it took me a while to see this different way, but once I've seen it, I'm not about to go back to the old way. That's why when people yeah. argue with you about, well, you should do this and you should do that. This, this, this has no appeal at all yeah. to a person who's tasting the good things of God. They're just wasting their time by trying to bring us under law. It's like a, they tried to talk the Galatians into being circumcised. circumcised, And Paul said, well, we didn't submit to them for even an hour. Why? Why not? Because it was wrong? Well, yeah, that part of it, but it's because he tasted something better. Yeah. This had no appeal. Mm -hmm. He's on the new and living way, and they're calling from the Plains Ono down there. <laughs> new and living way. And we have a new commandment. Commandments are different in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just different. 
Here's what John said, 1 John 2, 8. A new commandment, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because because the darkness is past, the true light now shines. Uh, technically, it's sort of the same, love one another. Well, actually, that isn't what the law said. The law didn't say love one another. Mm -hmm. The law said love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what the law said. Mm -hmm. So you so you sort of had to think over, like, what do I want? Well, let's see what. It is. And then uh, and then of course they would try and finagle a lot of it. But this is a new command. <coughs> In fact, Jesus spelled out more particularly, love one another as I have loved you. See, it's a new, yeah. new kind of commandment. It's not the same kind of commandment at all. And, of course, we are headed for a new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I make all things new. See, so I'm making everything new. And along the way, he's introducing you to newness. He's introducing you to new, to new things, new mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yes. And when you uh, when you like you, like you spot some of these songs or you're reading in scripture, you see something that leaps out at you and it's just fresh mm -hmm. and new. You part you're being introduced to newness to make you ready for when he makes everything Amen. Yeah, right. new. And uh, and we don't want to forget, of course, the new covenant. It was a new kind of covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 said, The days come. Remember he told John, write. Mm -hmm. right. right. The days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. If you think God being good to you will change you, have another, you better be thinking that over again. Because God was good to these people. Yeah. Amen. He was a husband of them and they broke his covenant. So I'm not going to make a covenant like that. I'm not going to make a covenant man can break. I'm not going to make that kind of covenant. This should be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Lord, I'll put my law in their inward parts. For them, he put on tables of stone. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. That, that's their choice. And they shall be my people. That's his choice. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. And here's why. For... I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. See, that wasn't true under the old covenant. Mm -hmm. He would bring, he'd bring up their sin quite a bit. Yeah. You were, and he'd bring up what they did. Mm -hmm. so they, this isn't the new covenant manner. He doesn't bring up Amen. infractions that you've committed. Because those have been forgiven. Yes. That, now, this is how everybody gets to start. Everyone that comes into Christ gets to start this way. Mm -hmm. You start out with the law in your heart and in your mind. Your mm -hmm. sin's forgiven. You know God is yours, and you're ex and He's accessible to you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have anybody to tell you that God is, and He's rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You, mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. That's how you start. And Hebrews eight, of course, states this <laughs> this covenant again, and then He tells you just so it removes any question. That this is the covenant Jesus is presently. Mm -hmm administrating or mediating. This is the covenant that Jesus, the one that was made with Israel and Judah. Now, it hadn't been made with him yet, but it will. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. God cannot lie. Now, this new covenant <coughs> is of a different order. It's not addressed to aliens. See, the first covenant was addressed to aliens, to people that were contrary to God. Yes. So it said, you shall, you shall not, you shall, you mm -hmm. shall not. Why? Because mm -hmm. that, that's the only way they knew. Yeah. This, and the people, this is a new covenant, the people are willing in the day of his power. Amen. See, they don't shrink back. Nobody in the new covenant says, don't speak to us anymore. They say, speak, speak, speak. You know, they want him to speak. Yes. That wasn't the old covenant manner. New covenant, well, there's no, there's no commandments. You read through that whole covenant and said, this is the covenant. Yeah, there's no commandments. It's all promises. Does that mean I can do anything I want? Sure does. 
sure does. Because the catch is that when you get a new heart, you want to do the right thing. Amen. That's right. Now, if you have trouble with the old man rising, well, then we got to take you. Got to take you back to the schoolmaster. <laughs> schoolmaster has you wrap your knuckles and teach you a little bit, so that you need to get back to the Savior. But that's marvelous about this new covenant. Yes. See, the people that read the scriptures from a, from the standpoint of being in Christ to find out what they're supposed to do. Now, this sounds honorable, I know, but this is not the right way. You should read to see what God has for you. That's what you should read. And you, you should try to appropriate the promises because it's by the promises we become partakers yes. of the divine, divine nature. And it's... Uh, it's a different order. It's based on promises. Mm -hmm. You know, today it, it become faddish, particularly in TV religion. There's an enormous amount of Old Testament being preached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've noticed. Yes. And it, they're preaching a lot from Deuteronomy and from Exodus. <laughs> it's phenomenal. So if you just do this, mm -hmm. God will do that. Yeah. That isn't the matter of the new covenant. The new covenant isn't if you do this, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. The new covenant is Christ did this and I'll do that. Yes. That's Amen. a new covenant. And your faith, now that's your responsibility, yeah. is this faith factor. Mm -hmm. And faith is fully equal to this new covenant. Yes. Now one last thing about this. We're being introduced to newness. You can't put new things in old patterns. Yeah, right. It won't fit. Man sews a new piece of cloth on an old garment. The picture is the garment we found, as Brother Aaron and I found this in India. They had material, and before they could they, you buy a bolt of material, they washed it before they sewed with it because it shrinks. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is you take a piece of material from an old garment, been washed and shrunk and everything, and put it on a new garment, when you wash it, it, it tears. Mm -hmm. and, and then you lose, you lose the garment. This is what happens when you try and take the new things of God and impose them on old procedures and old ways of doing things, and mm -hmm. it, it don't fit. Mm -hmm. Or it's like putting new wine in old bottles. Mm -hmm. You take old bottles that have gotten kind of brittle, they swelled with the wine, but, they, they, but they're not elastic, they don't go back. They don't go like this, they swell out, they just stay this way. So you fill up this old wine bottle, wine skin, mm -hmm. with new wines that ferments, it swells, and the bottle can't swell. Mm -hmm. When it breaks, you lose the bottle and you use, lose the wine. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the way it is with the new things you're getting that, it, that are intended to uh, prepare you for what's to come. Mm -hmm. If you try and pour them into old methods and old manners and old kind of religion and procedures and rules and this sort of thing, you, you, you'll lose the, everything you have. You'll lose it because yeah. it, it won't fit. Mm -hmm. right. It's made to fit into the new order. So I give thanks for this promise of the Lord. I make all things new. Amen. And he started out with what can be made new here, which is your unseen part, your mm -hmm. mind, your heart, your spirit. Mm -hmm. He started out there so you can make the transition into the, yes. into the new order.